Hi there. Today we're going to make a nice lobster bisque. My name is Chef Carlo. I'm a culinary instructor here at Nash Community College, and this is our culinary kitchen. And uh, we're trying to make a lot of good videos to bring you bring to you. In here, you're going to find the lobster shells. If you saw our episode on how to steam, cook, and crack lobsters, this is what we have left over. Actually, we have even more left over. Uh, some of the shells we're going to use to uh, do a sauce called cardinal sauce and the rest of the day we're going to do a, do a night lobster bisque. So we have about two pounds of lobster shells here. We have a cup of diced tomatoes for acidity. Uh, we have uh, three quarters of a cup of onion. Now to give a better depth to this bisque, I'm going to use leeks, about a cup and a half of leeks. Cup, cup, uh, cup of uh, celery, half a cup of carrots. I'm going to use parsley, start with two ounces of clarified butter, bay leaf, about a teaspoon of thyme. And to finish the sauce, we're gonna use uh, two and a half ounces of sherry. Also to finish the sauce, I'm gonna use heavy cream, which I have actually on the stove. It started with four cups of heavy cream and I'm reducing it by half. This will give it a nice uh, uh, thickness to the sauce. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start sautéing and breaking down our shells. So why don't you come over this side and you can see what I'm doing a little bit closer. Okay, we have a nice uh, heavy bottom stock pot here. My clarified butter is getting nice and hot. We proceed to put in uh, our shells in there. Make sure you get all the beets, pieces, and juice in there because it all contributes with flavor. Okay, so now on high heat, we're gonna get the lobster already changed color before it's steamed. Now it's gonna turn into a more deeper red color. And we really wanna try, as I'm stirring around here, I still wanna break down any kind of, any kind of shell there is in there. To do this, I have two methods. I have my trusty kitchen mallet, which I'm gonna gently push down the shells. And this is really for maximum flavor extraction. We're gonna crack some of the shells and really get those flavors going. So we're gonna let it cook at high heat for about five minutes. I'm gonna be next to it and I'm gonna be stirring our shells, making sure that it's cooking evenly and it's not burning. There's a difference between browning and there's a difference between burning. We want to caramelize uh, the final sugars left from the protein in here. We wanna be able to pull down a nice flavor, but we don't wanna burn it. So. It's a controlled browning. Okay, right now we're gonna add what we call the mirepoix or the aromatics. Uh, I'm gonna start with the tomatoes. The tomatoes, there's a lot of juice in there, so they're also acidic. It's kind of, they're gonna help me um, deglaze the bottom of the pan and remove all the beautiful fun that we have down there. I don't wanna use tomato paste. Uh, it's gonna bring way too much red color in it. I like to use fresh tomatoes, and as you can see, it helps me remove all the beautiful fun in the bottom of the pan. Right now, I add the onions, the leeks, celery, carrots, teaspoon of thyme, one bay leaf, and about one teaspoon of coarse grind pepper, which I grounded a couple of minutes ago. I usually add my pepper whole on stocks and uh, that has to that have to simmer for a long while. But since it's gonna simmer only half an hour, I want to have more flavor release from the cracked pepper. So we're not there to achieve any kind of browning on the mirepoix. Just wanna toss it really well with the, uh, with the shells. 
Now, I'm gonna have here fish stock. I have about three quarts of fish stock, and I'm gonna, it's already hot. And uh, no, it could, it could be added cold. I just uh, like to heat it up so we don't go, we don't have to wait until the stock comes to a boil. So your shell should be covered by the stock. I have a little bit more stock that I'm gonna add to it right now. And I'm also gonna add a handful of par parsley and parsley stems. Doesn't need to be chopped, I just need to infuse the liquid. And now we let it simmer. Let it come to a boil and then to a simmer for 35 minutes. 35 minutes have gone by. As you can see, this beautiful stock is left, left behind. At this moment, I'm gonna strain it through a chinoise, which is a really fine mesh colander. Uh, there's a lot of recipes that said uh, use uh, cheesecloth, but uh, it's complicated and it's sometimes even uh, uncomfortable to do it through cheesecloth. So I'm gonna get my chinoise ready in position. I'm gonna get my shells and carefully strain it, please. Don't get burned when you do this. point I'm straining directly into another pot because I'm gonna finish my sauce. I'm gonna use a two ounce ladle and with an up and down movement I'm gonna finish straining my stock. Now at this point there's two ways to finish this sauce. We can do a velouté base which is just add roux in there adding flour or some kind of starch in there to thicken your bisque. Today actually I'm going to choose a different method. I'm going to use cream that is being reduced by half. And I wanted to show it to you this way. You see that layer of skin on top of it. It's basically what happens when you let your sauces hang out after they are on cover for too long. But this one is going to be made. It's going to be fine. And we're going to break that down. And I'm going to add it to my sauce. The strainer straight into my sauce. that's gonna help me finish my sauce. It's gonna thicken beautifully my sauce. It's gonna, not only that, your heavy cream also, as it's been cooking slowly, is gonna impart a nice caramelization flavor to your sauce. And of course, We need to finish this beautiful soup with a little of acidity coming from sherry. Two ounces of sherry. I'm gonna taste it for salt and pepper. What you see in there is the natural fat that comes with the, uh, with the bisque. I'm gonna leave it there because I like the flavor and color. If you do not want it there, a way to get rid of it is by just using your ladle and skimming the top, or by adding a starch to stabilize your, uh, your bisque. And right now I'm gonna show you how to finish it this way. We're gonna serve one like this, and then I'm gonna show you how to finish it with a starch. I haven't added any salt to it yet. And 
and this is the moment that I will add my salt. Now a bisque, if you want it thicker than this, it has to be, it has to be velvet base, and I will show it to you in just a moment. And then it's, this is your Finnish lobster bisque. And one of my students asked me, is a sauce a soup or a soup a sauce? All soups, in my opinion, are sauces that have been thinned out. And just because I love it, I know this is non-traditional, but I like the addition of fresh parsley right on top of it. And that is going to be your lobster bisque made from scratch here at Nash Community College. We're gonna finish this bisque with a whitewash. We have four ounces of flour and four ounces of milk. Uh, I don't wanna use a roux for this soup because we have already so much richness in there. I don't wanna add too much richness. So I'm gonna use the whitewash and the most important about your whitewash is that your, that your liquid has to be boiling for it to achieve maximum thickening power. I'm gonna use milk for my whitewash instead of water because hip milk has a better flavor than water. At the same time, I have about two quarts of soup in there. That should be enough. Still, I'm gonna just add half the whitewash. I just want to make sure that I'm not adding too much. Your whitewash is cold, your soup is hot. I'm going to add it with my trusty whisk. I add half my whitewash. I'm going to stir and I'm going to wait for it to come to a boiling point. Once it reaches the boiling point is where the true thickening power of your starch has been achieved. If you want to make it gluten-free, then you can use a starch like corn starch, potato starch, or cassava starch to thicken your, your soup. Uh, but the rule of thumb is about two ounces of flour will thicken about a quart of liquid. I can, I can feel it, it's, it's thickening. I can see it getting thick. And just be patient. Don't try to rush your soup or your sauces. Nothing comes, nothing good comes out of rushing anything. I check the consistency of the soup and the taste, of course. Taste is great. I want it a li just a little bit thicker, so I'm going to finish adding my whitewash, my whitewash just a little bit. I'm not going to add it all. I'm going to simmer it for five minutes and then remove some of the uh, this foaming, which is called the impurities. I'll strain it just to make it extra velvety and I'll show it to you in a couple of minutes. All right, it's been simmering for about five minutes. And as you can see, all the impurities have come to the top. I just wanna get them. I don't wanna get a lot of the soup in there, just the impurities from the flour. And when I say impurities, I don't mean bad stuff. This is just odd starches that accumulate there in the, in the cooking process. They will not dissolve. There you go. If you remove this, it's going to give you a better finished product. At this moment, I have removed the impurities. I'm going to use strain the sauce through a fine strainer. Make sure if there are any lumps that they haven't dissolved, they stay behind. And every time you strain your sauce, you're going to make it more velvety and more velvety. Uh, the more you, the more you work it through a chinois, the more the, the velvetier the sauce gets. As you can see, 
all of this stuff stay behind, no problem. It's gonna make a creamier, super beautiful sauce. And that is your finished bisque. And here we have your beautiful finish lobster bisque. And just remember the difference between a bisque and anything else. A bisque has to be made with shellfish. A tomato bisque does not exist. Shell, a bisque has to be made out of shellfish.